Guitar and Excel, open chords, C major scale, C major chord, and related scale. Get ready and don't fret. Remember, the board's fretted, so you don't have to be. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we started in a prior presentation. So if you want to construct this from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you don't necessarily need this workbook if looking at this from a music theory standpoint because we will simply be using it to map out the fretboard, give us the scale and related chords that we're focused in on. If you do have access to this workbook, there's three tabs down below. Example, OG, and the Open Chords C. Let's go to the OG tab. This is the worksheet we put together in a prior section. It now being our starting point, we will typically copy over from this worksheet and then make adjustments to it so we don't mess up the original worksheet. The example tab represents some of the adjustments that we will make to it, kind of the answer key after we adjust the OG. And the open chords tab is the tab that we copied over from the OG tab in a prior presentation and are now continuing to work on at this time. Quick recap of what we did in the prior presentation. We went to the OG, we have the entire fretboard over here, and we want to minimize much of the fretboard so we can focus in on one component of the fretboard and then see it side by side as we can see here with our scale and the related chord that we're working on. So we minimized it down to just zero to uh, fret number three and we put it side by side with our worksheet, which gives us the scale down to here. Here's notes one through seven, and it gives us the related chords that we're gonna be working on. And we're starting with the first chord of the C major scale, which is a C major chord, which has the three notes in it to make a C major scale of C, E, and G. We color coded those, mapped them out on the fretboard in this open position, and discussed the different ways that we can basically finger uh, this position, the primary way of course being this way. But we also noted that we could grab something up here, right? And we could grab it like this. So I can grab this one. And then I would still say, let's copy this, right click and copy and paste. And then I would still have this one, I could do that. Or I can grab just these three if I wanted to do it that way. So any any combination where I have these three notes in it will give me that C major scale, whether or not I'm ringing out all six strings or not, right? I could just grab that one right there and just ring out these three, for example. So now what we want to do is map this on top of the pentatonic scale. So this is the related pentatonic scale in the key of C in this position we have the same fingering like this but now we added some green notes which is a little confusing these these greens are different than that green i hope that's not too confusing but these are the added notes so we have these two uh this one and this one those are going to be the added notes on top now note that you could start to look at this pentatonic scale you can look at this and say okay let me just start playing you know the pentatonic scale but we'll do that more later. So we'll focus in on the pentatonic scale itself at a future point. What we want to do at this time is just see how this C position is inside of the pentatonic scale. And that gives us a few more options if we're just kind of noodling around. So when I say noodling around, we saw before that we can kind of just strum this. I can start picking up some fingers and see how that sounds because the open notes should always work. And now we have a few other notes that we can basically pick up. These two we already probably were noodling around with before because we said that all the open notes basically work. So if you're holding this position down, then you can pick your fingers up and you're revealing these open notes and that's gonna work. We'll, we'll kind of talk about why it works uh, in future presentations, but you can see all those notes are in the scale. So you can see them over here and that's basically uh, why it works. So you can also pick this one up down here. So if I was playing this position, I can pick up uh, this D right here with my pinky finger. And you can see that's in the scale. So that should be something that works. And then you can start playing this if you wanted to and focusing in on particular components. So if I was to play the C and then let's say jump up 
and then focus on these two notes and try to play something in between. Sometimes it's useful, some simple strumming, just like two down strokes on a C, and then start noodling around up here. Right, I'm just adding those two, I can double stop it. You know, taking those two notes at the same time. just play around with adding those into your into your strumming patterns and just seeing that those are available to you and notice what I'm doing is I'm, I'm focusing in on these two and I'm letting go and saying okay the open strings are fine so I should be able to play that as well you could do the same you know down here and you could you know you could focus on on these two so I can start like looking at those two strings and so I could be just kind of noodling around in between some simple strumming pattern and again you could you could obviously do this all the way through and focus in on those specific uh, items and then what you're learning is you're kind of picking up part of the part of the pentatonic scale that's around around this in a in a basically a more of a natural way and then we'll pick it up more technically in a future presentation now you could do the same thing with uh, the major so if I was to copy this down and paste it down here so now I'm just going to copy this whole thing and move it down on the major the major looks somewhat chaotic it's basically the same thing as the pentatonic but now we have all seven notes in here and note that the pentatonic scale is usually something that's a little bit safer when you're switching around from from uh chords to chords or if you're playing on top of something else so it's useful for it to have the pentatonic but obviously the major scales gives you a few more options they all fit within each other and again you can kind of do the same thing so now you have the added blue notes and you could do the same thing and start to focus in you, you could actually look at this i would call this you know position four uh, i'll talk about that later of the major or pentatonic position you could call it a c uh, a C position when you're talking about the pentatonic positions which we'll talk about more later and you could start to memorize you could play up and down just the scale but again for right now I'm just, just trying to say okay what's available to me if I was just picking around uh, in the C area so now I can see you know up top I can see okay so now I've got you know my C here I've got the G and then I've got another uh, B that I can play around with. And so I can do that. I, I might focus in on these because I've got this nice little square here. Boom, 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 boom. So that means I've got the open notes. So you can see this little square, these two and these two. That's pretty easy to kind of play with. So you, so you could do a strumming, a little picking thing. kind of dissonancy way to play it with this two like that it gives you a lot more tension but you can do a whole lot of stuff just focusing in on particular points in this you know in this pattern and then start to understand each each part of the fretboard as you're kind of focusing in on one piece you know at a time so that would be the general my general strategy that I'm recommending here and then if I copy this down here, once you can kind of see this position, then you can kind of try to fit these together in terms of what is actually going on with the major and minor scales. You can see this, this represents the chord that we're playing. And then on top of that, the green notes represent the added pentatonic notes and the blue notes represent the notes that are on top or added to the pentatonic so so 
if you're if you're looking at this, you can actually think of the blue notes as the bass. They're at the bottom, and then on top of that, we put the pentatonic, uh, the pentatonic, which are the green, which are going to cover up some of the blue notes because the green notes are within or inside of the blue notes, which are the major scale, and then the ones that are these colors, we put on top of that, which is going to cover up the green notes that already covered up some of the blue notes because the actual chord fits on top of uh, the, the pentatonic scale, which fits into the major scale. So we'll talk more about that later, but just conceptually, that might be interesting. Now, note also, you might be thinking, well, what happens if I move, if I move this shape up to the four and the five? Because we talked that could be an easy thing to kind of start playing with. If you're just strumming around, I can move this full shape or some part of it up to the uh, to the one four five because those are the major chords. Well, you have to kind of be a little bit careful when you're thinking about what's going to be what's going to be around it because if you if you move up to the one four five, like if I move this position from the C, I use the C open C position, but now I'm up here playing an F. Then you could think about that as though you're switching entirely from the C scale to the F. And that in that case, all the other relative scale positions would follow you and you can play the relative scale positions after you move up the fretboard. And that's fine to do. Or you can think of it as you're still in the key of C, but now you moved up to an F, which means that you're, you're gonna have different related notes around it. So let me just kind of map that out. We'll talk more about that later. But let's think about it a little bit more here. I'm going to unhide uh, D to K, right click and unhide. And let's go down, for example, to uh, to this one. So and let's hide from uh, uh, the 12th fret <laughs> over to our information here, right click and hide. So so now we moved up to the fifth. Now the fifth, if I move the shape up here, you could say, okay, I just, all I have to do is move this shape up and I see my shape right there and I can finger my shape. And uh, so that looks good. Now you could finger it and try to pick this up, finger it different ways. But if I just use that same shape and I just played these three notes or the, picking this one up too, then I could just move that exact shape up like we talked about before. So I can be playing this shape and I can move it all the way up to uh, 10 and I can play it here and I can pick it up uh, here and then I'd be playing this is my root now this is the C shape that would be my root going up here so you might be thinking well what about the relative or related notes around uh, around that note well if I'm thinking of myself still in the key of C but now I'm moving up here, I can play the related C notes, which means you're going to have a different set of notes around it. Or again, I can think of it as me switching completely from the C to the to the G. So uh, let's pretend we're still in the C here. So let's let's select this entire thing and say, OK, if I select this entire thing and I'm going to go uh, uh, to my formatting and say we're going to say this is equal to and we already have a C, so let's go, uh, actually, what do we have? We don't have a C, so let's go to a C. I'm gonna make that blue, custom formatting, and fill, and I'll make that blue. And then I'm gonna say, okay, and then I'm gonna go another one, this equals, and then a D, we already have, an E, we don't have, let's make an E, custom formatting, making it blue okay and then let's go to another one and do custom formatting f we don't have yet so i'm going to make that blue custom formatting blue okay let's drop this down a little bit more and then let's do custom formatting uh the g we have the a we don't have let's do that one and say okay and then okay and then the b we already have so if i look at this one i'm going to say copy paste let's make some 
we're, if we're fingering, say, this, which is our normal C position that we moved up, and I relate that to the C position that we, that we would have back here, which would be here, here, and here. So you can see the shape around this one is not going to be exactly the same when, you, when you're looking at the full major scale, because now I'm putting the chords around it that are still in the key of C. I'm just playing the G, the G chord, which fits in uh, the key of C. So, so you can't play. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is if you can't play the symmetrical shapes, if you're thinking about moving up up here and still playing the notes around it, that are kind of in uh, the key of C. However, if you think about going up here and switching entirely from the key of C to the key of G, then the related shapes, pentatonic and major, will be the same. They'll be symmetrical, and, uh, and that'll sound good if, you, if you're switching the whole thing up. So, and by the way, these two might look similar to you, so let me just map it out a little bit more clearly. If we look at this first position, We've got this one, this one, and th this one. Over here, we still have the same relative positions mapped out, but if you look down on the next string down, you've got here, here, and here, versus here, here, and here. So you have a, a difference of positions here, and then here, 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 versus here, here, here. So same positions, but here and here, you only have those two versus a different position here, so they're not exactly the same. To show that, I'm going to adjust this worksheet on the right to be in the key of G as opposed to the key of C so we can map out this information on the fretboard in the key of G. So I'm going to unhide from L to AK to do this, right click and unhide. I'm going to unhide from 153 to 169, right click and unhide. I'm going to go to my key over here in number format and change the key number from a 4, which is a C, to an 11, which is a G. Unfortunately, it's not mapping out over here because I have absolute references, so I'm gonna change them. If this is too technical, you can fast forward, but I'll show you what I'm doing here. We're gonna say this equals to the X lookup tab, and I'm gonna pick up this number plus uh, this number. And I want this number to be able to move down when we go down, but not to the right when I copy it to the right. Therefore, I'm gonna put a dollar sign before the letters, but not the numbers. And I'm gonna say plus, this uh, number and that one I wanted to be able to move to the right but not down therefore dollar sign before the number but not the letter and then comma the lookup array I wanted to look up that number which will be a one in this case and the scale uh, and the scale relative positions and so I'm going to make that absolute because I don't want those arrays to move as I copy them comma and then the return array I wanted to give us this numbers that are representing the notes and then f4 on the keyboard closing it up and let's copy that across and see if it does what we think it should so i'll copy that down and then down here i have to change this one too because it also has the absolute reference so this equals the x lookup tab i'm just going to pick up this note up top I want it to move as I copy it both down and to the right, so no absolute lookup array. I want it to find it over here in our notes, control shift down, and then absolute F4 on those, comma, and then the return array, I want it to give us the one with the number and the letter, control shift down, F4 on the keyboard, and then closing it up, and hopefully I've got that correct. So now I can copy this across and copy this down. Okay, hopefully that's correct. I'm not gonna, we're gonna trust it right now. And then I'm gonna hide from 12 over to my scales over there or my worksheet, hide that. And then now you can see I have the G uh, in, my, in my first position. So I'm gonna say, okay, so now Let's make it a little smaller so we could see everything. We're gonna, let's just map this out in the key of G. So I'll map out these notes rather than in the key of C, right? So if I select this entire thing, this entire thing from here on out, 
and then I go into the layout and I say this is going to be equal to and I'm going to be picking up let's put this up here this one and I'm going to make that uh, custom fill blue okay okay and then boom equal to this one I'm going to make that custom fill blue okay okay and then equal to this one making that custom fill blue okay okay equal to this one making that custom fill blue okay okay equal to this one making that custom fill blue okay okay and then equal to this one making that custom fill blue okay okay equal to this one making that custom fill blue okay okay and then i'll put on top of it these three because now i'm going to be mapping out the one note which is now a g instead of a c so i'm going to say let's make this this note and i'm going to make that green and that's now our root and then i'm going to say let's make this one this note that's going to be the red the third and then this one is this note which i'll make yellow and so there we have it and then i can say let's format paint this to here format paint this to here and format paint this to here and so now you can see uh when i'm when i move up to this position up top that the relative position will move up right so this this whole relative position should be the same as uh the relative position we had here right this information here let's let's hide from here to here right click and hide scrolling down a bit so now we've got this whole uh, piece uh, when I was in the open position and I'm going to put this over here and then here's we were fingering this this and that that would be in the key of C let's take this out entirely and then if I finger this down here we would be in the key of G now and we'd be fingering like these and you can see the rel the whole relative position is the same. So the point is that if you're noodling around and you're saying, okay, I'm gonna be moving this C position up to this C position. And then the next thing is, well, can I, can I then noodle around in the same relative shape? You can, but just realize that when you do that, you, you're not, you, all the notes may not then be in the key of C. You've basically switched, you wanna switch in your mind that now you're in, you've actually switched all the way to the key of the next key, in this case, the key of G. So now I was playing all the notes and you can do that in the, in the song, but just note your switch. The other way you can do it, it would still sound good, is that you can move up here and you can play all the notes that are still in the key of C around these three notes which happen also to fit in the key of C, which means that the whole relative shape around it will not fit. It's just those notes will fit, but, but then when you noodle around it, you'll be playing the notes that are still in the key of C, as opposed to the notes which are in the key of G, which will have some different notes. So, that, so that's just a point now that we can practice when you're kind of noodling around and you're thinking, okay, I can, I can noodle around here, I can use all the open chords, and then I can move this thing up. I'm still in the key of C, although I'm playing a G because the whole G chord fits in the key of C. What about those other notes? You can, again, you can use the symmetrical position, but then you're kind of switching uh, the scale. So, but it's, you know, you could totally do that. Just it's useful to keep in your mind that now you've switched the scale. <laughs> all right, so we'll play with, uh, we'll play more technically next time and start looking at the at the numbers and the intervals